Oh, is there a well in here? Because I literally wrote well. a well. Multiple wells. There's multiple holes that just drop like 40 feet into the ground and they're filled with water. It's literally a <laughs> labyrinth of holes in the ground. You think there's not holes filled with water? No, I wouldn't think that in a tunnel they would put holes filled with water well, for the remains of people. They're not necessarily putting wells. It's mm. just, it's underground. So obviously there's water in the ground. Oh, to keep the water from and touching the body. Collapse. Well, they said that the mm. reason they did that mm. is to keep the water there. Yeah. Because if you the don't keep... The filled with water. The, the tunnels. If you don't keep the wells, it doesn't drain it. Oh. Because I was like, why the f*** am I seeing wells? Hi, I'm Em. And I'm Liv, and we're your mad sidekicks. I can hear the noise in my head every time we do that because we do it so much. Jesus. So today we're doing another famous haunted location, which is the Paris Catacombs. I want a croissant. But uh, it's cool that we are psychic mediums and we don't need to go to the location to talk to the souls there because going to the Paris Catacombs would be very dangerous. We can uh, like remote view kind of aspect and talk to the spirits that supposedly haunt the Paris Catacombs. So Liv is going to write down everything that she gets as a psychic medium about this location before I go into the backstory. Okay. All right. All right. You ready? Uh-huh. Okay. For my intuitive abilities. So I think it's hilarious because the first thing I see is a lady in white, which is cliche as fuzzock, and I don't even want to say it because it's annoying me. It's my tour guide. It's f***ing annoying. Like, I usually see her with a lantern and she helps people out. I know that you're probably scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so well. Em and I are twin flames. If you guys don't know or are new to the channel, which means that we are two halves of one whole idiot. Actually, we're two halves of one whole idiot and that's the only sentence, but we're actually different souls. She is a compliment to my, what am I, the yang and you're the yin? Yeah. Because I want to be the yin. I think and it I sounds be better. the yang. <laughs> yeah. So. She's the yin to my yang, and uh, usually we've noticed, and she's also a psychic medium as well, that I do better talking to male souls. She does better talking to female souls. You get the gist of twin flame All right, so I literally wrote lady in white, and you already know it annoys me because there's always a cliche lady in white. She looks like an angel to me. She has like really, really freaking big wings and like mm. is dressed in that Venetian sort of garb of toga toga but yeah. not <laughs> i put lady in white but scares people like me um but m could talk to her though because she's got the same bad vibes or something good luck editing my swear words because eh. i'm uncomfortable and then i put there's an old man and he's carrying something but i don't think it's a light it looks like a lantern like an old black mm -hmm. cast iron lantern I think but there's, there's multiple people with lanterns that help people out but it doesn't have a light in it Oh, there's cool. no light in the lantern. So that's why I'm like, why does it look like a lantern, but there's no light in it? <laughs> it's really silly. And I'm like thinking, okay, did the people like go down here when they eat? Because it makes me think like a canary in a coal mine. Mm -hmm. They used to have canaries in cages in coal mines because something about like, I don't know if it was toxic gases from the earth or um, a lack of oxygen, something like that, but they would keep canaries in there. And if the canary died, then the guys in the mine would be like, all right, we gotta get out of here and evacuate because something's wrong. Like the birds were more sensitive or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he gives me that kind of vibe, but I also don't know if that's correct. But I literally put old man carrying something um, that looks like a light, but it's not a light because there's no light inside of it. And he helps people find a way out. So I feel like, it's in it's weird though because the lady in white is the one that oversees everything yeah. and she's the one that deploys the people with lanterns yeah. to help people get out she's like uh -huh. the big boss the big the big energy you know ceo yeah. vibes but in a toga that's cute that's exactly what i see it's funny the guy's really cute he's wearing like old timey wool outfit um and he has boots on but he's clean. He doesn't look like he's in a coal mine. But his clo his clothing is much older style. Um, but he says, he says I'm newer when I was alive than when this place was originally built. Um, but you associate with people from that time frame since your soul recognizes it. So that's how, that's like why you're seeing me compared to other people. You ready for the backstory? Yeah, I'm ready. 
So first things first, what is a catacomb? A catacomb is basically a underground burial ground. However, the Paris catacombs aren't actually considered a catacomb because they are not a burial ground. The bones were actually moved into this underground space. And I believe that is called an ossuary, an ossuary where you, it's basically a place where you store bodies, where you store bones. Oh, but yeah, it's just a giant ossuary where they just kept all of their dead bodies, you know? So with that being said, the catacombs were not originally built or created for this purpose. They were not created to be a catacomb. They were actually mines and people would get to the limestone from these, from underneath Paris to create their buildings and things like that. So they not only created the buildings there, whatever, to live in, but they also started creating these big, beautiful cathedrals from the limestone that were underneath Paris. I just want to say that when you started talking about how it wasn't originally intended for a burial ground, some guy stepped forward and he had like plans for a building. And I was like, did you guys dig up a cemetery so that you could build a god building? And it looks like a bank, like the big sandstone banks. Mm -hmm. or limestone banks and uh he was like no just listen and yeah. then you said that they did that to build buildings i yes. thought it was you're building you're moving things to build a building no, no 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 you're moving things and building a building yeah the catacombs were not catacombs they were actually mines for limestone and they used the limestone to create buildings and this is during the gallo romana period and the inhabitants of Lutia, which is the forerunner for the present day Paris. So it wasn't Paris back then, it was whatever this L place is. Lutia or Lucia maybe? Lucia. But this thing that I found is crazy because of the thing that Liv said. So it says, in later years, this stone built much of the city. The mining utilized the technique of extracting horizontally along the vein, a process which left a honeycomb of tunnels as Paris grew. Okay, and then they made me write gold, 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 and that is the way that the lady in white sees everything. Everything, mm. like, I wrote, like, this picture that's on here. I don't know, it'll focus. This, this is what she shows me the catacombs looks like. It's not necessarily circles and it's not squares, it's like these octagons and they go out. And then each thing has its own hallway outside of it. And then these little squiggles, because I put Ziggy Zags, are the hallways that lead in and out differently. But they never, they don't like match up. If you go in one hallway, it, you have to go back out the way you came. You can't keep going forward and expect you to get out a different way. <laughs> Does that make sense? I did yes. not just say that. <laughs> yes. Okay, he's telling me that. The way in which they excavated the uh, stone in there made it look like honeycomb. Yeah. And I wrote a conico. Yeah, you literally wrote octagon. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, um, but yeah, gold, gold, gold. Um, they showed me all of the hallways as gold and the woman's like, it's sacred. It's gold light. It's not a bad place. So as the city spread there, they fell into some issues of you know, if there are these giant tunnels underneath the city, we're going to have structural issues. Sorry. So the city became worried about Paris ultimately collapsing. So the authorities set up the general inspectorate of the quarries. And it basically just like checked on the stability of the tunnels themselves. And they discontinued any more creation of these tunnels in again, fear that things in the Paris were going to start collapsing. Is it not all on one level? Can you like grow down? Yes. There are people that like make holes to get back up because they get lost. So they go up to the, the top floor so you can see like giant gaping holes going down to the second tunnel floor. Is there like more than one level though or more mm -hmm. than two levels? Well, I don't know if there's more than two levels. I've just watched videos where the guy was like, that's a hole down to the second level because it's two levels here. I thought it was all just are. on like one level. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too until I started doing research. But yeah, it's like really crazy because the holes are like literally the size of a person to get out of the They're the size of level. a small Frenchman. Just yeah. enough to fit you in your baguette. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really scary. 
Um, yeah, because they made me write, there's depth to it. It's not all on one level. Yes, correct. All I don't right. know how many levels, but I know that there are for sure at least two. I for sure thought that there was uh, only one level. I thought it was like you just like pop yourself down a, like a, a drain, like you know those like vents in New York City mm -hmm. that like sh comes out of. You just like move that over and like the manholes. Yeah, you just pop. Yeah, yourself the manholes in the manhole. go down into them. Yeah, like you can see like the uh, ladder going down from the manhole into these tunnels. Ah, I figured it was just one manhole and then you're there. Just one level. Ride your bike around. There's one underneath that in some locations. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> Scary, yeah. That's why they were having problems with it, like collapsing. <laughs> so while they are creating all of these tunnels, they have finally gotten to this point in which the population of Paris is growing. However, they cannot hold up the cemeteries for the amount of people that are now passing because the population is so high. So the, I believe it's like 200 cemeteries within Paris were starting to be overrun with uh, people passing in dead bodies. I'm trying not to say dead bodies, but it's... <laughs> so every time they had to bury someone, they would like make this hole and they would find bones underneath it and basically just like stack people on top of each other, which then started becoming an issue because it got to the point in about 1780 where one of the largest cemeteries in Paris, it gave way right into one of the basements of a restaurant. So there were sanitary issues going on. There was also issues with the like infectious disease and illness that were getting into the water supply and causing these infection and illness within the, without, with, throughout the city. So in 1786 is when they decided, you know, this is an issue, we need to do something about it. And then they thought of these lovely tunnels that have already been created and mined to build all of the buildings. So they moved these bones, these people's bodies into the tunnels that were once mined. And this is what created the catacombs or the ossuary. And they moved these bones in the middle of the night to not uh, upset anyone. <laughs> That's why she's an angel. What do you mean? Um, because the woman, she's like, I'm not just a lady in white. She was the reason I'm the one that's here is because a lot of people, a lot of souls were upset that ah. they were being moved. Yes. And it had to be explained to them that it was for the greater good of other people. She goes, because when you're working with the people that live there, like Em said, they have a dark sense of humor. They get a yes. little, a little crass sometimes. She goes, and angels deal with people. She goes, I'm an angel of the people. That is why I'm here to settle the souls to explain to them why they were being moved and, and the importance of it. That it's not just about them now that they're dead, which most people think it's all about them that they're dead. Mm -hmm. So she was there to like, she's the one that keeps the peace. Now she's like there, but I also need to specify that there isn't unrest. She's just the one that is there for them because of the move. Got you. Yeah, I feel like since this is a cemetery, she would be the like, mm -hmm. the gatekeeper, so to speak. She says she's cooler than gatekeepers. She yeah, really wants she's very to put, different. That's why I didn't say it in the beginning. Well, she wants to put an emphasis on of like, like we literally made a, an episode about angels and she's using that to me. She's like, I literally was sent on behalf of God for these people, like their God. Got you. I am one of the human angels. The way the people that are related to the souls, the bodies that had to be moved is saying that they thought it was, um, like a terrible act not all of them but some of them yeah and she's like it was an ostensible act and ostensible says that it is apparently or purportedly pur pur but perhaps not actually so she was there to just like settle everything and the way that they use it in a sentence is this person is portrayed as a blue collar type ostensibly a carpenter so like using context clues you could say ostensibly i'm a female mm -hmm. so she's like it seemed like a bad thing, but it wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. She just wants to talk about that for a second. Yeah, because there's a lot of weird superstitions about moving people's bodies after they pass. Ah, uh -huh. it was ostensibly bad, but it's yeah. not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so these bodies were moved into these tunnels underneath the city, and they continued to move bodies from these other cemeteries that were filling up over the last few years, and then it finally closed in 1814. And 
then the catacombs became home to i believe it's like six million parisian souls however the bones were actually placed in a manner to please they are almost like if you go down there it's like being in a museum it's very like architectural and they had a specific person that was in charge of doing that his name is Herakat de Thury. He set up the bones as a museum with spectacular architectural structures such as Doric columns, plaques, altars, and unusual shaped structures, many of which are considered works of art. Which is why I want to go down there because it's really cool to see because they use the bones to create these beautiful sculptures because it was a, a bad thing that happened that they had to move these like it was a very dark thing that happened and he like brought light to it he's telling me that he did it in a way i feel like his mother passed and she might have been one of the bones that had to be moved i mm -hmm. feel like he doesn't know he said we tried to work so fast because bad things were happening like people getting sick yeah he's like a very sweet man but he's also very smart um, I feel like his mother's bones had to be moved and he's like every time I had to he said when I was given this task this responsibility I treated every soul as if it was someone that I knew as if it was my mother's soul even though I didn't know whose bones were whose he's oh some people used to tell him things when he made it spirits yeah oh. <laughs> he said I I um was his he said I carefully placed or had other people because that's what he says when he says I he means the people that he employed to do this on behalf of him He's like because I couldn't do it by myself. He said I just was the person that made everything happen He yeah. said I took the same care that I would as if every single set of bones that was Moved was my own and by my own of like my mother's my own families. Yeah because it's like They don't have the opportunity to have like a tombstone But this man made it so that you can still like go and see them Mm -hmm. Like it's still placed in a very beautiful manner. It's not like a dark thing that he was doing. So, yeah. He likes you. He said that you're good to do the research. <laughs> Did you feel like someone was standing over your shoulder helping you? I mean, yeah. He said that he was pointing out things to you. He like has something in his hand that he writes with. <laughs> Yeah, because the way that I did my research was a lot different than how I normally do because I literally pulled all of these things from different sources and then put them in order. Mm -hmm. He said he helped you. I can see Cause... him. He like has a pen. He's pointing on your screen. He puts the pen in his mouth or whatever, writing utensil and thinks about things. Yeah, it makes sense that he's the one that's doing that because I also have this woman telling me things about it. He also thinks like you. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Oh, it's because you have a background in art. He said you're yes. the only one that would understand the attention yes. to detail and the significance of what he did. Because mm -hmm. you guys, he's like, you, he says that you guys are cut from the same cloth. Yeah, because most people would be like, it's so dark that you're like doing art with like death. And it's like, death is not something that is disgusting. It is something that is a part of life and life is beautiful. And I am portraying my ideas of the art with the bones. So there were a whole bunch of bones placed in architectural shapes. However, there is also sculptures down there that are made not from bones. I feel like the person that made those sculptures wasn't happy about it. Why? <laughs> Someone asked them to make them. Oh, that's why. I feel like why. this guy got a lot of flack for making the catacombs. It was like a very controversial thing for him. Making the sculptures in the catacombs? Well, the man that created the catacombs, it was very controversial oh. to him because his demeanor changed um, when this other soul stepped forward to talk about being the one that made the sculptures. Okay, um, because they're explaining it to me with like the aspect of Michelangelo. Michelangelo didn't want to do half the shit that he did. And you can see it in his artwork with all of the like little tidbits here that he tried to get in to like jab at the people that employed him to make these sculptures in a certain way. Um, so I feel like at this point when the sculptures were made, it was a point in which the cat, a point in this man's career and the like building or creation of the catacombs that he had been a little more tainted by the responsibility he'd taken on by becoming the inspector. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like, when I asked these people to make these sculptures, they gave me so much shit about it and I kind of was an asshole too. Because it was at that point of like people gave him a lot of well, you should 
be ashamed of what you're doing because of yada 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 he goes but those people don't understand the importance of what we were doing because it yeah. was more than just bones it was about them and if we didn't do that then they were going to die too and then they're going to be in the catacombs so no matter what you do you're damned if you do damned if you don't no pun intended so when i came to the person that i wanted to make these sculptures they were on the one side of the picket fence of i don't like what you're doing but you're going to pay me a lot of money so i'm going to do it mm -hmm. and he's like and i kind of like scared him a little bit Mm -hmm. Oh, because of the souls that would talk to him. Whoa. And he's like, this is your last chance. Whether you think this is good or not, you better make these uh, structures in such a respectful way and to the utmost yeah. of your potential because they're going to be honoring the people that you think that I'm, like, desecrating. Yeah. That's hilarious. He, like, pulled out the big one for him. Uh-huh. Sorry, my head's tingling again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for the myths? So, in the early 1990s, these cataphiles, which are people who study and explore the Paris catacombs regularly. They were walking in the dark catacombs and they finally found a video camera. And to their shock, there is actually footage on the video camera. Is and it a girl? No. No? It is a man. On the camera itself, they find that there is footage of this man who is talking about how he can't find his way out of the catacombs and that he is lost and he slowly is starting to lose his mind in the dark, quiet catacombs that he is in. And then the footage finally stops with him dropping the camera and running away and disappearing. And I would presume that they didn't find like a body with this camera because it, they just found the camera. They don't know what happened to him, if he ever got out or not. The wells don't have things covering them, do they? They're just holes in the ground? Yes, they're holes in the ground. He fell in a well. There's also a myth that after midnight, which kind of goes into this other story of this man in the video camera losing his mind, um, after midnight, it is said that the walls will start to talk to you and tell you to go the wrong direction to get you more lost within the catacombs. And this is where I was trying to not ruin it, but I feel like these voices that people are hearing are the residual energies of people who were lost before. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> it is. It, they're giving it, it's like the video that we just got done doing where the people were talking to the entity attached to the chair, but there's not an entity attached to the chair. So these yeah. people are like, it's the walls that are talking to you. No, it's the residual energy of people literally trying to figure out where they're going, but they were lost too. You can't take directions from someone who's already lost. Yeah. So I, I find it really creepy that people are hearing the like lost voices of people that also got lost in the catacombs. Well, they're also, so they're telling me that you wanted to know why they can hear them. Because yeah. you're very skept skeptical of why normal people in the catacombs could hear voices like we do. <laughs> It's because they're in a uh, heightened sense of understanding. Oh. So the adrenaline and Got their you. heightened senses allows them to hear it. But if you That's were to go down there or like normal people, they'd be like, you're crazy. We're fine. <laughs> it's because uh, that's why the guy said that he was going crazy. Oh, because he was hearing voices. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, it, well, he was also seeing things too. He's like, there was like this big dark black monster that kept trying to follow me. But um, a that's soul, what the movie I think is about. A soul is trying to tell me that it's not that there was a dark black monster after him. It's the thing that we were talking about. Oh. With your brain, if you're in the dark for too long, it creates things. Got you. Because uh, the, the catacombs movie. weren't making him crazy. He was making oh. himself crazy. The movie is about these two people that go into the catacombs and obviously get lost. And I feel like there there was maybe a part in which they there's like this inscription that says like the road to hell type of deal and they feel like they're going down deeper and deeper to actually find Satan where he lives like Satan lives in the catacombs so they were seeing some sort of dark creature which makes sense relating mm -hmm. to the story also the story was inspired or the movie was inspired by this story so. did they ever figure out who the guy was that died from the video camera did they like give it to authorities and figure out who he was no he says he has a daughter. He's like, they have the tools to figure this out, but they just don't. Yeah. And he's upset about it because he just wants people to know. He's like, I don't care that I died. It's but I at least want people to know like where I am so that they don't worry about it or just never know. That's the thing that's keeping him here. Ah. Uh. Because I'm like, you know, you can just cross over, right? He's like, but that doesn't, that defeats the point. 
I want people to know, like gotcha. specifically his family, that he is okay in a sense. He goes, and I refuse to leave until somebody knows what actually happened. Got you. It's like important to him. It's like the thing that he won't cross the line for. Right. Because it's more important that he stays here physically than not, even though the same thing would get done. He's like, no, it wouldn't be the same thing. He's like very adamant about it. Well, because if he, his family doesn't know about it, then they're probably still thinking about him, which would bring him to them. Oh, okay. He's like, it doesn't matter if I was passed or not because they still would think I would still be there and bring me back to them. Okay. Okay, so he's telling me, um, you know how we say that when people unalive themselves, they don't go to hell, there is not a hell. It's that they're forced to look down on the feelings that they have created to people mm -hmm. because of what they've done. It's yeah. like their punishment. He's like, that's what I would have to do because they wouldn't know any different. Yeah. And that's not restful for me. Yeah. Well, will he cross over when his family does? There's another soul that's talking on behalf of him. I feel like someone's there to help him cross over whenever he's ready, but he's not. So he like tells him to f off. <laughs> Got you. Because this more quiet mute or like demute, demure guy stepped forward and started talking on behalf of him. He's like, probably not because he's, it's like, it goes farther than that. He's like, this is how things happen, that people get upset and they stay here. Yeah, because technically he could get stuck in the timeline that he's in as a soul. He thinks that he's too smart to not. To not get stuck? Uh-huh. It's like, no matter what you say, he is too stubborn to think anything different and he doesn't care, which is why this guy is here. He's like, I'm here with him. It's fine. Got you. So the last myth is of the guy that I was trying to talk to you about, but his name is, I think it's Philibert? I think it's just Philbert. Philbert? Okay. Is your fiance boyfriend thing making moose noises? Because that's like the third time I've heard that. He um, sounds like a he's moose. He's not in... here. Who is making that noise? I don't know. It literally <laughs> sounds like a man making moose noises. He's not here. So. Who the f*** is doing that? Someone outside. My neighbor? I, is your neighbor outside or are yes. we hearing a spirit that's trying to get us out of the catacombs by making moose noises? <laughs> have they found have they found bottles of wine <laughs> in there? Some man is telling me that it's like a really good place to hide wine. <laughs> it's He's very proud of it too. He's like, all you, all you gotta do is move the skeletons because no one thinks to look behind the skeletons. And he's like, and any good Frenchman would know. They would be fine with the idea of hiding a good bottle of wine behind them because no one's gonna find it now how are they gonna know there's history saying that brewery companies would brew beer down there because it's cold mm. <laughs> yeah the temperature is colder so it's cheaper to brew beer down in the catacombs that's really funny no they're telling me like people like hid like good wine back there it's really funny one guy's like very exuberant about it <laughs> Anyways, um, oh, he's a thief. I'm like, where are you getting wine from? And he's like, I was a very esteemed individual. I'm like, no, you're not. An esteemed individual wouldn't approach me like that. And he's like, okay, fine, I hid stuff. Where do you <laughs> think that a person hides mm -hmm. stuff? In the catacombs. You go down there, mm -hmm. no one's gonna look for you. Once you steal sh you pop yourself down, just like you said, you and your baguette and your stolen wine, and you hide it. No one's gonna go down there. How are they gonna know? He's really funny. Who are you talking to? A man. Do you know where he works? Or worked. He's or telling me. Thief. Well, I don't, because I asked him where he got the bottle of wine from, and he said that his brother was more reputable than him. He's like, I was always the bad egg. My mom never really liked me, but I was okay with that. He kind of gives me like silly vibes. Did people know about him? He said he. Did he die down there? And I feel like he's not the same guy. Is the guy that died down there older though? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, the I guy that so. died. Well, the guy that died down there was like in his 40s or 50s or older. Um, but this guy's younger. He's like in his 20s or 30s. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's in his 30s, but I think he's in his 20s. Because when you said something, he stopped talking. Because we weren't talking about him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw this old guy and he's grumpy. He's like pissed. Yes. And he gives me more of like a medium build kind of. Um, with darker clothing. And when he walks, he grumbles about things. So did he die down there? He wants, he says, what's it to ya? There's a lot of myths about him, too. He says those god people don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, made up stories based upon him finding him. 
He didn't get lost. He had a heart attack or something. Why was he in the catacombs? <laughs> he says, that's my business, not yours. Oh. <laughs> but he says, I didn't get lost. I don't get lost. Oh, okay. I feel like he might have been a part of a bank and he was laundering money <laughs> by himself. He was not a part of a bank. No? I don't think so. He's telling me that he was taking money from somewhere and putting it down there, like his own stash. He goes, but it wasn't my money. I took just enough so that people didn't know that I was taking it. He that goes, probably makes more sense. He goes, but that's not, uh, no. Yeah, he says, I was taking just enough so that people wouldn't know that I was taking it. That's why I had to go down there so frequently. Uh. He says it's a b to get up and down when you're my age. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's telling me that he didn't die because he got lost. He's like, I had like a heart attack or something. Something killed me. Got you. Like a normal, natural ailment. Mm -hmm. He's like, and then, you know, if you get out of that situation and wake up, there's not much you can do. No one can help you out of there if they don't find you. Yeah. He goes, but I was not lost. He's very, very adamant about that. He wants me to like point at the finger, like, yeah. and like make the cranky face. Uh, that's the main story of, he got lost, but that's obviously like the first thing that people are going to go to with a literal network of tunnels. He wants to say thank you for not saying that he got lost. He's like, no one's been ballsy enough to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is Filbert Aspart? Um, yeah, Aspart or Asper. Aspert. Aspert. Filbert Aspert. That sounds French. <laughs> Aspart sounds American. I'm gonna say Aspert. It has a Aspert. little bit of fair flair to it. Yes, sorry if we are pronouncing things incorrectly. I'm We're sorry not French. I have offended you and your French too, but also <laughs> I'm not because you wouldn't be offended if you offended me. <laughs> so this is uh, the story that he wants to claim that he did not get lost. However, this is how the story goes. This is the myth. So during the French Revolution, a man named Filbert was the doorman at a hospital. He supposedly was on a mission to get liquor from a cellar. And somehow he ended up in the catacombs. And hold on, he wants me to tell the story differently. <laughs> so they, he wants me to tell you about how they found him. So they found like a, they found his bones because it was 11 years after he had passed in these catacombs. And the reason why they gave this story is because they he had a key card that was attached to his belt or something. So his occupation was this doorman for this like hospital. However, the myth goes, the stories that people told about his death is that he went down there to supposedly get like some sort of liquor from the cellar and somehow he ended up in the catacombs to which he became lost. There are stories that he also was supposedly intoxicated, which made it even harder for him to navigate the catacombs, which is probably why the soul is very angry about um, people saying that he got lost. <laughs> yeah, when was this? Do you know when he was alive? Um, I mean, I don't know. Because they said he has a key card, so that has to be recently. Yeah, he has a key card. His body was not found until 11 years later when a group of cataphiles uncovered it but he would be bones, so there wouldn't be a ability to know how he died. So they told stories about it. But one of the things they like to say is- He doesn't is, have a key card. It says Philbert or Philibert. I think you're right. I wouldn't think that there would be another Philibert. eye. Philibert S. Baird was a doorkeeper of the hospital during the French Revolution, and he died in the catacombs of Paris in November, 1793 after entering them via a staircase located in the hospital courtyard, and his motives are unknown. But he was born April 13, 1732 in Ravel, France, and he died yeah. in Paris. They identified him by the hospital key ring. Sorry. Hanging on his bow. Mm. Okay, because I was like, there's a man here, and he's not from, like, nowadays. So I was, like, really upset that you were saying that he had a key card, because I was like, is my life a lie same, ring. same same but different okay did a rend rendition of what he might look like he looks like a ghost he looks like a dude that doesn't get lost in the catacombs if you ask me he looks like he's a ghost in that picture i'm a ghost a spooky ghost 
Sorry. It is said that he haunts on, for some reason, November 3rd. So if you want to go see him, check it. Check out the category. You mean the day that he died? Is that the day he died? November 3rd, 1793 or something. I just read it. November 3rd, that is the day he haunts the catacombs. It's he's He's got an alarm scheduled to do that, sorry. <laughs> he said he doesn't do that, the scary thing does. Ah! <laughs> is there something scary down there though? Mm -hmm. Um, they had me write red eyes between holes in the walls, but you don't see them in between the holes in the walls of the skeletons because the skeletons are sacred. So yeah. it's the portions of the walls that don't hold human remains because it's not allowed to go there. Somehow it's in here, but they kind of view it more as like a rat. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like the lady in white, the Venetian angel lady, she's like, it's here. He's like, she's like, he's here, but like, there's nothing we can really do about it. And he does, he's like, it... oh, okay. She says here because the people that go down there like him being there. So he mm -hmm. stays. She's yeah. like, but it doesn't. He doesn't influence anything of the inner workings of the catacombs um, because the catacombs is a very sacred, okay place. She goes, but people really like to f it up. Have bad things happened in there? Like people have gone down there and done really sh things. Yes, She's course. like, it's so annoying. You can never just clean house and have these people go away. She's really funny. <laughs> it's literally a hole with skulls in it. What do you think they're doing down there? Yeah, but when she sees the skulls, it's like, she sees them as people. She doesn't I know. see them as skulls. However, do you think people do that? No. <laughs> That's why there's that weird thing in there. Mm. Down in the holes. But she doesn't say that it's a problem at all. She's like, it's yeah. so stupid. She's like, it's like uh, a legality of which that she can't get rid of him. And the legality is like people's stupidity. <laughs> yes. But I think it's funny. Yeah, you, you could only haunt on this day. <laughs> That's really funny. He says November, th yeah, he died November 3rd, 1793. But yeah, that is the catacombs. Are you spooked? I said that he was in his 50s or 60s too. He died when he was in his 60s. Mm -hmm. 50s or 60s. Did you guys like it? If not, don't tell us. Only tell us if you did, because I'll cry. Also, this is a series. If you want to check out the playlist, go check it out. I'll put it in the iCard up here somewhere. Haunted locations. Yeah, our haunted, famous haunted locations. However, if you guys have any suggestions of what we should react to next, please put that down in the comments and we will get on that, my dude. Or if you know if the video dude ever was figured out like who he was, I need to know. I don't think so. Cause if they knew that I would have gotten a name. Yeah, maybe, so. I don't know. French people, we have a couple French listeners for our podcast. Yeah, but it inspired a movie. <laughs> God. <laughs> So uh, if you guys like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Because we are your meta side. Kicks? These are your Philibert. lovely patrons. And Philibert, sorry. Also, if you guys want to get in on the full reading that Liv did before knowing anything about the catacombs, follow or, sorry, go into join, that's the right word, join a Patreon, and you'll be able to see the entire reading before me telling her everything about the things. Me talking to all of the things in there? Yeah. It's all gold. So uh, if you guys want to get any bonus content like that, make sure to join Patreon, like these lovely patrons. We do readings, we have a podcast, we have a blog, we have a website, we have dad jokes. Mm -hmm. Everything you could want. Okay. Worried about the ground underneath Paris. Collapsing? Yes. Like a giant sinkhole? <laughs> well, if there's giant holes in the ground, there is a high chance that things are going to start settling and falling downwards. So- Hot twists, that's what happened to Atlantis. They had catacombs, they didn't do the whole thing. <laughs> you know if that's true. <laughs> it's the first thing that came to my head, so oh my God. it's not my own thoughts. <laughs> They're like, it was like when Patrick wanted to push everything off the thing, but we kind of did it ourselves and we didn't plan it. There was no Alaskan bullworm and then we all decided to reincarnate as the French. You know, history repeats itself, but some of us remembered. Sorry. Oh my God. It just sunk. And they're like, it's hilarious because things are supposed to float in water, right? No, you can, it's the same thing as above, so below. Sorry. Have you watched that movie? Atlantis? As above, so below. No, I just know that it's something that people like to say about spiritual sh and it makes me feel like I it's could be It's a movie cool. about the catacombs. 
sorry. That's I'm not I'm speaking anymore. <laughs> That's I'm why I was like, wait, did you just say that? A meat puppet <laughs> for these spiritual things to start talking to me. You guys want to know what it's like to be a medium? Meat puppet. It's Translative me. meat puppet. I am nothing. <laughs>